80% of the people in the autism spectrum are either unemployed or underemployed. And our focus is to easily integrate the people into our workforce and provide with the right support structure that allows them to thrive in the specialist skills that, that they have. The Dandelion Program was created to actually look at building careers for people on the spectrum. I think that's what the, really the difference is with the Dandelion Program. About. It's about looking at it in a different lens and saying, well, what are people bringing? People on the autism spectrum have special skills in relation to science and technology, particularly in our team working in our uh, testing environment within the technology part of our organisation. Uh, and they've proven to have skills that are very, very well suited the Dandelion program has got two elements to it. One is a, um, an employment program, one's a work experience program. So the employment program focuses on people that are on the spectrum and unemployed and we give them the opportunity to get into the workforce and with DXC. One of the biggest things about being in the Dandelion program is that it's helped me find a work environment that's specifically designed for me to fit into. I think the skills of people on the autism spectrum that I was excited about uh, being able to utilise in defence were the sort of analytical skills that a lot of people on the spectrum have. The Dandelion program and the participants of the program have really enriched our cybersecurity capability. The participants of the Dandelion program are working in the Defence Security Operations Centre, analysing various logs, understanding patterns, detecting insider threats and writing certain programs to make sure that we defend our networks and they are doing a brilliant job in all these aspects. I wasn't very independent or confident in myself. It was hard for me to find jobs. Even getting experience was pretty hard. The interview process is pretty much for people that have the skills socially but not really suited for people that just want to get into the work. Those skills come with being in those environments and I've gained the ability to talk to stakeholders in a language that they understand. The participants of the Dandelion program have uh, achieved whatever we set out for them to achieve has put the pressure back on us to keep pace. The Dandelion program is not about just recruiting people on the autism spectrum. This is about the ability for us to provide a normal working environment with the right support structure and to see the people thrive in that environment. So the DXC Work Experience Program is a four-week internship where the, um, the participants in the program work on a industry project leveraging robotics for a local primary school to help them with their educational needs. The function of the program is to program a robot to work with an autism unit within a primary school. And it also gives us a chance to show our skills to better prepare us for the work environment in future and potentially open up a job for us. I suppose that's where the Dandelion program signs because it's not really an interview as it is really um, a four-week practical test of your abilities. The Dandelion Work Experience Program has exceeded the expectations, so the children find working with the robot very exciting, but also it, the robot works in a way that they can rely on. The XE Dandelion Work Experience Program is helping to identify those kids earlier and provide them an opportunity that, that allow them to move into a workforce. That gives a lot of hope to our families of children with autism or on various levels of the spectrum. Key part of the Dandelion program is actually providing hope. Hope for people on the, on the spectrum, allowing them to actually think that they, there's going to be jobs for them in the future. The fact that I could play a small part in getting this program into defence, very happy and also very very optimistic about the future. It is a win-win situation both for the employers and for the program. There's no reason why this could not be successful in other industries and in a global context. The skills that people on the spectrum have are applicable anywhere. Where I've gone from being like immobile and just literally doing nothing to now having something I can do every day that actually puts um, my skills to good use. One of the things about the Downline program for me is actually how much impact it had, um, had on people's lives. Seeing that actually result in benefits to their friends, their loved ones, their family, 
showing that they can now be, you know, have a quality of life. I have the ability to rent my own place and have a child and support my family. I wouldn't have been able to um, have the life that I have right now without the Dandelion program. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's quite humbling to actually... Um, we started this program um, four years ago um, and um, seeing now it's growing and um, we're now providing advice to companies overseas. We've, I've just come back from the US um, providing um, advice to JP Morgan Chase, Google, um, Cisco. So it's actually a broad number of actual companies are actually seeing what we've done humbly in Australia, which is also great as well. Um, just going to be talking a little bit about the program and you probably the, the, the first few uh, presentations have really been about... Um, how to get on board and really about those early years. We're a little bit more mature being four years, so what you're going to see from this presentation is a little bit more about probably things that SAP were talking about with scale, with sustainability and, um, and, or, and scalability and sustainability. So we, uh, as I mentioned, we started this um, four years ago. Um, it was um, a from, actually um, from a need because we actually were seeing a war on talent. So very much what um, ANZ Bank was saying in regards to um, the, um, their need about um, looking at, um, you know, especially cyber security roles and testing roles, we were finding a shortage in the market. And that really, uh, really drove a kind of a demand to look at, well, where, where could there possibly be some untapped talent? And from this, um, I remembered a, um, again, uh, similar to SAP, um, and it's probably some pork, is um, remembering an article uh, from Thorkelson from Special Stern, really a, a, one of the real thought leaders, or uh, well, probably activists um, globally around this. And we uh, basically took that and then started really uh, uh, talking to people globally around what programs have been um, done, what programs have, been, have had been um, started before. There's been a movement about 10 years ago in this space and we found a lot of programs actually did dissipate and I think um, ANZ Bank put this up very well about the, um, being the activists, the, the pioneers and the settlers and really not having a lot of that evidence-based research to actually support the settlers. And we're, one thing we're a big part of this program when we pulled it together was actually evidence-based research. So we've got a lot of data we've been working with closely with La Trobe University, um, with the Autism CRC, Cornell University and uh, recently with the University of Queensland. And that's just growing. Um, we've also uh, started to work in with the University College of London and Stanford University as well. So as I was probably in the slide, um, in the video, we really are got two streams to the program. We've got an internship and an employment stream. We've got currently 58 people we've employed um, and um, we're looking to grow that as well. We are a little bit different. We actually focused on three domains, and that was virtually um, cyber security, data analytics, and software testing. So this is just a little bit about the structure of the program. Um, we've got really year ones about job awareness. So we really focus on getting them settled in their workplace, what work activities that need to be done, focus on the, uh, we have kind of two tracks on it, a technical track and a social track, um, and really focus about integration. And that's the whole purpose, is just focusing, getting them to integrate in the work environment. It's not about a job, it's about them having a career and actually able to self-actualise during that, their, that, that career. So year two is really about self-advocacy. So how do we actually get, look, get the individual saying, what job do they want? So, what the, so they better understand what their strengths are, their weaknesses, and also then saying, well, what opportunities are, are, are available? So during this kind of process, we actually go ahead and do um, a bit of a career fair, and we have a great, um, you know, I don't know the teams at the back there, sitting on the back row, I don't know why you're sitting at the back row. Um, but they are, um, um, they're the ones who really actually run this program. And over the last kind of um, four years, we've able, been able to refine this numbers of times through actually evidence-based research too, which um, we've get from Latrobe. Um, year three is all about a transitioning year. So, and it does, this doesn't mean that somebody can't move um, quickly through this process. 
Um, but yeah, we just tried to have some structure. It was actually interesting when we pulled together the program, our autistic um, trainees were saying, we don't have any structure around the program, which was a good bit of feedback. Um, so we started pulling that together and actually getting a very much, a very, there's a lot more detail that goes behind this. And we started pulling together a program that allows them to work through what do I actually look, what am I looking at in my first kind of 60, uh, 30 to 60 days, when I'm looking at my 90 days, what happens after that year, and what goes further. So this is a little bit more detail around the program. So we have an assessment process, um, an onboarding process, a um, what we call skill and experience building process, and a, um, a job and a career transition. Um, these slides will be actually be provided as part of the um, of the pack going out afterwards. Um, we spent a lot of time with La Trobe University um, with regards to looking at all these different elements of the program. Um, we we're very lucky then to start collaborating with Cornell University about some of the other aspects of it. And, and that actually further enriched the program and also with, from our learnings um, through the program and um, with, we've got um, six autism consultants in, in, our, in, our, in our program. They further enriched it and actually refined it as we went through. We have three, apart from these kind of major building blocks, we actually have three streams um, which we build against, which are, is a technical stream, an executive functioning stream, and an adaptive, life, uh, adaptive skill or life skill stream. Um, so we all, we, what we're trying to do is look at the po person as a, as a whole, not just, just how he just functions, just at that particular job function. So some benefits. Um, I think one of, the, one of the things we've been quite amazed with it is really the productivity. I think JP Morgan Chase has got the best um, actual productivity numbers because they've just scaled and able to run a, um, a neurotypical team against an autistic team, um, which was um, quite, um, um, when, when being there, that 48% um, better productivity. We've also um, seen things as just the culture change, and I think that's really been a uh, it's something we've been able not quite to measure, but, you know, a, a sense of empathy, um, greater empathy within our managers and the, and the co-workers. Um, even uh, simple things such as, you know, if a, a project um, we goes, which was interesting, a, a project went red and, um, you know, some of the co-workers around said, well, that's only a red project. The autistic people said, that's, that's a red project. So, you know, we actually had to come together and it actually created a new sense of um, what that meant, what that meant what a red project was. So culturally, culturally wise, it were actually had, um, it really had changed our, um, you know, the sense of, you know, what some of the work practices were in our, in our organisation and with our, um, with our service and with some of the clients we serve as well. We also had, um, we believe, you know, probably like the other, um, you know, some of the other presentations, we've seen better manage, uh, our team leaders and managers are, have become better managers. And so actually managing diversity, um, you know, has actually allowed them to actually um, grow themselves and grow that capacity. Um, we also have had, obviously, a, a positive impact on, um, obviously, their, on their lives, but also their, um, their extended families' lives as well. And, you know, this is a, a statement from Rear Admiral Quinn, um, who we, we just saw in the presentation. It really is, this is about, it's a competitive advantage at the end of the day. We're trying to actually look at building capacity. And that's what we're, you know, if you look at from our, from our perspective, you know, uh, we, this is an untapped talent pool. We're looking to build competitive advantage through this. So what are our learnings? So the organisation has to be ready. And I think this, um, um, this is something that was um, some pork um, also uh, mentioned. We found out you need to make sure the organisation's got the right, um, uh, you know, almost, almost got the right readiness assessment or um, the right litmus test that, you know, they are ready to accept these individuals. So um, we've got, uh, we've done autism awareness training, um, autism management training, and also communication and workplace. So there's overall organisational change process to this. Um, we recently announced a, a global relationship with Optimize, we, um, which is a need training plat platform, which is you'll see it um, in your pack. Um, so, you know, you're allowed to get on demand. So we're, one of our biggest challenges was not having electronic training. So we didn't, couldn't capture everyone. Um, so that's now that's available and you'll have what that's in your pack. Um, also, not just thinking about the individuals, just at, with about their technical skills. I mentioned you have to look at this at a holistic, executive functioning skills, life skills, and actually empowerment. How do you empower them? 
to actually then to self you know, self actualize or even self advocate. Um, we've seen in uh, plenty. Of, we've got plenty of examples where they might be stuck in a role and um, they feel like they never can get out of that role. And as they can self advocate, they can then say, "I would know this role doesn't really suit me, or I like to do something else." Um, support, and I think this is kind of common across um, SAP and some pork. Um, don't just don't think about it as just um, providing the uh, support uh, to the individual in the workplace. You have to be for, um, provide a holistic support inside and outside the workplace. And um, um, we'll be also be announcing a, um, a, a relationship with Life Without Barriers, um, which we're very pleased to. Um, we've been working with them closely for about a year um, around actually having a holistic um, support process around our, um, our team. Again, challenges this is what we've seen, lack of evidence-based research, and I know this is really what, um, what some of the autism CRC have been put up together. This has been really great. Um, so there's now research being pulled together from Curtin University, um, all the members of the, um, of the autism CRC. It really is a, a very important element. And I do really want, um, uh, uh, we've actually pulled in uh, as part of this, as DXC and our partners, about $600,000 worth of research in this area. Um, to give you a perspective how important we say it is, um, we, and we will continue to actually look at research. Um, it's, not, it's actually about building platforms and, and, and evidence that allow future programs and, and service providers to actually build on top of it. At the moment, there's really none. So when we, um, firstly, when we did a lot of due diligence, we, we had to go and interview people. We've interviewed people across the globe. Um, you know, uh, about what programs work, what programs didn't work, experiences. We need that to be in, in some kind of evidence so it allows, um, you know, allows the next generation of programs to be, to be developed. Um, I think lack of understanding and, and knowledge by some service providers, uh, probably this is a very broad thing, about really what's required about onboarding and sustainment. And I think if you are a service provider in this room, I would definitely have a look at those things. And that's kind of a common across uh, the US as well. So, you know, look at those things. What can you actually look for? We're not just after jobs. We're after actually having sustainable careers for people. So what actual post-employment programs do you have? So have a think about that. And I think you really need to go in. Um, you know, this is the same thing I've seen in Europe and also in the US. Um, so what can, you know, if you're going to be starting, especially smaller companies um, that not, probably don't have the scale of some like SAP or uh, uh, or um, DXC or ANZ Bank, um, you, you'll, you know, what can we do to actually provide them post-employment support programs? Um, and this is another thing um, with um, employer tools. So around management training, screening, behavioural management tools and transition plan. It's really that overall holistic look at the individual. So we've actually had to learn all of this ourselves and I'm very lucky we've got it's just... just We've got a great team to do this uh, with our autism consultants um, on board we have and our partners. We've been able to start building some of these tools. Um, the economic business case. So, um, and this is one of the things we've kind of um, struggled a little bit with, but we've been, been, get, uh, been working with Latrobe and also um, PwC on this and we're going to be working closely with ANZ Bank on this economic business case. So it allows other business ca businesses to actually look at this and say, well, how do we employ more people with autism? We'll start the journey. And I think this is just our, um, also, I think, a fragmentation of the services, social services sector, which has actually found, found it difficult to actually navigate sometimes. So the future. Um, and um, we, like, we have a goal of employing about 120 people on the, on the spectrum and we'll hopefully be doing this by early next year. So that's how, we, how much we, the program actually means to us and also its success. Um, we've actually announced global relationships with Optimise on a training uh, program around, with neurodiversity. So this allows us to scale it out. So uh, different cultures, um, different countries, don't just think of Australia, we have to have a platform that will actually allow us to train individuals across globally, across I think we've got 100, probably 160,000 employees. So we have to really have to go ahead. If we're going to do this, we have to look at scale. Um, further research in the areas of mental health and autism um, is one of some of the challenges we've faced. Um, so we're now going to be looking at how we actually build that and build some more evidence-based research so we can look at tools around um, and, and also um, techniques or interventions we can put into the workplace. Um, we're working with um, Cornell University, the Autism CRC, 
and the University of Queensland on a global survey across all autism programs. Um, this will also help us, uh, you know, also help service providers um, understand probably what the what the benefits are, the challenges, and um, how do we start going forward. So that that survey will will be will work through that um, over the next kind of 12 months. We've um, we'll be launching an MBA. Uh, our, we launched an MBA internship program with developing for future HR leaders, which we're doing an internship with Cornell and also the University of Queensland. And what we're hoping with that is that um, our, we, you know, future leaders of, um, you know, um, our future HR leaders start to understand how to develop some of these programs. Um, we'll also be running a, an internship program our, um, this uh, coming up in, in December. Uh, in Queensland, which is great. Uh, so we've had done um, South Australia and um, Canberra, um, working with University of South Australia, ANU, University of Canberra, and um, also um, CIT, which is a, uh, the Canberra Institute of Techn Technology. And we'll also be um, been working, we'll be announcing a partnership shortly, which um, with Latrobe, with um, on some, uh, an autism workforce behavioural management behavioural management tool, which is coming out of Israel. Uh, which we've been able to work with the Israeli um, um, Defence Forces. So this tool actually has been deployed by them and we'll hopefully be commercialising that with them, um, with, uh, with the Latrobe and the Israeli universities. So we've, we've been trialling it for six months and we'll now be putting that in place across all our, um, across all our teams. And again, um, we're, we're looking to expand our program nationally, um, looking to look at... Um, and to do that, we, we need a national... Um, um, a national non-government organisation or a national partner, which is Life Without Barriers. Sorry. And here's some um, resources we've put up. Um, so this is, um, if you want to get um, some material, um, you know, um, this is, the, we've got some open source documents, um, which we provided through to um, Cornell. We've obviously got the Autism CRC. People know um, the OTARC, which is... Um, Latrobe, um, we've been working with and other organisations, um, integrated autism advisors. They're based in New York. They do a lot of advising to, of in, in New York around uh, for some of the banks. Um, Optimise is a UK company um, which does, does the, um, the platform. And we do have a LinkedIn group as well, Autism at Work. So if you want to connect to that. Thank you. <laughs>